Our scripture readings from this morning come from the Gospel of Matthew and the Gospel of John. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you will call his name Jesus, and he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. And then from John, a new commandment I give to you, love one another, as I loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, well, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. On this third week of Advent, we come in this series, God with Us, to the theme of love. The Advent candles and their themes are guiding us in our understanding of the fullness of the blessings that we receive from God because Jesus was born into this world to be our Savior. As we turn our attention to love, we all know that love is a feeling, an emotion, but it's much more than that. Today we're going to see that love is a choice. I think about over the years, over the centuries, since the beginning of time, how much energy has been expended in the expression of love. How many times have you gone to a movie theater to see a love story on the screen? Or how many songs have been recorded and put on the radio that tell a story of love? And history, both real history and literature, is filled with love stories. I mean, some of them you know very well. Mark Anthony and Cleopatra, Lancelot and Guinevere, Napoleon and Josephine, Romeo and Juliet, Robin Hood, who was his one? Maid Marian. And even Beauty and the Beast was a love story. And if you look at the Bible, you see fabulous love stories. Abraham deeply loved Sarah, his wife. Jacob was passionately in love with Rachel. And what greater love story is there in the Bible than Boaz and Ruth? I'm sure you could take time both in the Bible and in literature and throughout history and come up with an almost never-ending list of examples and stories of love. But as you did that, as you searched for them, I wonder if the one we have before us today would stand out. Or would you even see it as a love story? Have you ever considered the relationship of Joseph and Mary as a love story? And we all know, or at least most of us know, the, the customs and the traditions of that day. The marriages were arranged. A dowry was paid. Vows were said. And then they began planning the wedding day. But just because their customs and traditions were different than ours, it doesn't mean there wasn't love. I mean, think about it. From the moment Joseph and Mary said their vows to one another, they were bound together. And that meant from the time they said their vows until their wedding day, they spent a great amount of time together. Every time there was a holiday, they, Joseph was probably a, a guest in Mary's home, getting to know her, falling in love with her. They were dreaming together of what their life was going to be like, of the family they would have, of the children they would raise. And then the unexpected happens. Mary tells Joseph she's pregnant. How would you like to have been a fly on the wall for that conversation? Joseph, I need to tell you something. God sent a messenger to me, an angel, with a message from God. Joseph, I'm going to have a baby. I'm pregnant. Everything was probably wonderful up to that point, but the moment the word pregnant came out of Mary's lips, everything changed. There was instantly an ache inside Joseph's heart, a hurt deep down in his soul. How? Why? Why would you do this? I mean, everybody knows there's only one way to get pregnant. Why would you do this to me? 
everything we had planned, everything we had dreamed, and you've just ruined it all. Have you ever been around someone who's been spurned by the one they love? Have you ever attempted to console the unconsolable? I, mean, I imagine it was a fabulous story up to the point that the word pregnant came out of her mouth. At that point, everything she had said just became an excuse to cover up the reality. That very well may have been the reason why Mary got out of town, why she went to visit her cousin Elizabeth. Let things cool off a little bit. Let some time pass. Let Joseph wrestle with his emotions. And not only Joseph, her family, her mother, her father, her siblings would have all thought the worst of her. And the town. What would find out when the rest of the people in the village found out she was pregnant and not married? The law was very clear. A woman who was found to be pregnant outside of marriage was to be stoned. That was still permissible under the Romans. Women had much, much fewer, many fewer rights than men. But there was also a provision that a woman could be put away quietly. Just dissolve the marriage and let her be someone else's problem. This is the reality of what Joseph is wrestling with at this point. Let his anger rule the day or simply walk away from it all. We all know that Joseph received a visit from an angel in a dream. I read the text just a minute ago. Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. And she will bear a son, and you will call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what, was, what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. We all know God sent the angel with a message, but what we often fail to catch is this message from God came after Joseph made his decision. Joseph had wrestled with this decision for months, and when he finally made the decision, as the scriptures recorded, and her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly after Joseph made that decision. God sends an angel with a confirmation for Joseph of the miracle that had happened. Why? Why not send the angel ahead of time? Why not send the angel to help Joseph make his decision? Because God was waiting. Waiting to see the outcome of the war being raged in Joseph's heart. You ever known someone who was betrayed by a lover. I spoke a moment ago of, of the, the hurt and the anguish that would have been in Joseph's heart believing that Mary had been unfaithful to him. But there's another emotion that begins to rise up in someone's heart, and that emotion is vengeance. An anger so deep in the soul that you feel like you're going to explode. Spewing contempt does not even come close to identifying the emotions of someone who's been betrayed by someone they love. So God waits. He waits to see the outcome of what is happening in Joseph's heart. Because you see, Joseph has a choice. It will either be vengeance or love. The law and vengeance, or love and life. God waits for Joseph to wrestle with what he's feeling in his heart. And the moment Joseph chooses love and life, to put her away quietly and not have her stoned, God reveals to him the truth of what has happened. Because Joseph chose love, he is given to experience love as he's never known it before. Well, everything Mary has said is true. The child truly is a miracle. And the one to be born will be the Son of God. 
You see, Joseph had a choice. He could choose the law and death, or he could choose love and life. Joseph chose love. And because of that, we have life. Did you ever think of that? I mean, Joseph was a good man. Joseph was chosen by God to be the, the husband to Mary and the earthly father to Jesus. And he was there to witness everything that God was doing. He was there in Bethlehem's manger, and he watched as Jesus was born. He held the baby Jesus in his arms. He fed him and marveled at him. And when the shepherds came with their message from the angels, he stood back in awe of what they said. He was in the temple when Simeon and Anna spoke their words about this child that they carried in their arms at eight days old. And when the Magi came from the east, Joseph welcomed them into his home and watched as they knelt down and presented Jesus with gold and frankincense and myrrh. And then there was another dream. Arise, take Mary and the child and flee to Egypt to protect the child. Yes, Joseph was a good man. He was a man used as nobody in the history of the world had ever been used by God. This became his calling. It became his privilege, all because he chose love. As I said, Joseph had a choice. He could have chosen the law and vengeance or love and life. And because he chose love, he chose not only to love Mary and the child she would bear, but he literally opened the way for every one of us to know the love of God. Because Jesus was born into this world to be our Savior. It always comes down to a choice, doesn't it? We're faced with that choice every day. Will I fight for my rights? Will I follow the letter of the law? Or will I choose love? It's the same choice that was in the heart of God the Father. God the Father from eternity made a choice. What were his options? The law and vengeance or love and life? His word is clear. The soul that sins shall die. Every one of us deserved his wrath and punishment. Everyone deserved condemnation in hell. He could have chose wrath and judgment. He could have chose the law and vengeance, and he would have been justified and right in doing so because we are the ones who are guilty. But there was another choice. God could choose love. He could choose to love us and do what is best for us even though it would mean his own heart would be breaking. And what could be worse than to witness your own son brutalized and abused and nailed to a cross? To see the abuse heaped upon their, on your son and know you had the power to intervene and stop it, but all for the sake of love you allow it all to happen. Jesus came into this world because God the Father made a choice. Instead of giving us the judgment and the wrath and the condemnation, the vengeance of God upon sin, he chose to love us and give us life when he sent his son into the world. Jesus made the same choice when he came. Jesus chose to set aside his glory and his power and his authority. He chose to come into this world as a humble human being. He chose to allow them to brutalize and abuse him. Please, please never forget, Jesus could have made a different choice. He did not have to die. He could have called the angels of heaven at any point and legions would have come to his defense and to his aid. Jesus did not have to die on the cross. No one made him do it and no one did it to him. 
He willingly went to the cross because his heart was filled with love for us. And it is as we experience that love of God for us that he enables us to truly understand what it means to love one another. The text I read to you a moment ago, a new commandment I give to you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. It is as we love each other that we are truly reflecting the heart of God to the world. When people see us set aside our own rights and not follow the letter of the law and not fight for our own rights, but love someone in spite of who they are and what they do, that we are witnessing what God is like for the world to see. And isn't this what Christmas is really all about? The truth of Christmas. That God so loved the world, he did not give us what we deserved. But he chose. He chose to give us his son to be our savior. He chose to give us love. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen.